Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings. In today's video, we are going to actually be doing part two of our Easyscape Garden videos. We will be putting a link below to the part one part of the series, um, but the video that I did originally was just getting so long and I thought there's so much great information, so let's break it into two videos. So what is an Easyscape Garden? An Easyscape Garden is a perennial garden that's made up of three or four different perennial varieties and they are grouped together so that there's color from early season through late season in your garden. It may be foliage color, it might be flower color, um, but there's some various color going on throughout the season. Also with these Easyscape Gardens, there's a lot of solutions that are being solved. So if it's deer resistance or if it's clay gardening, um, drought tolerant, sun or shade, or even a pollinator garden. So whatever you're looking to create with a perennial garden, there's an Easyscape Garden that is sure to be a solution to what you're looking to do in your gardens and landscape. So let's go ahead and watch the next five Easyscape Gardens. The next garden we're gonna look at, it's called a dry space garden. So I don't know, I'm sure there's several of you out there that have those spaces that just, things don't seem to grow well in because they just don't get enough water. So this would be one of those areas, um, this would be one of those gardens that could go in those areas. So let's take a look at what some of the plants that are recommended for dry spaces are. First, we're gonna look at heuchera or corabels, which is that beautiful foliage plant. Um, it comes in various colors too. So heuchera or corabels, um, there's green, there's chartreuse, there's purple, there's black, there's kind of orangey, peachy. So they come in various, uh, various shades of the foliage color. So really, I'm sure there's, there's one that's gonna work for your color scheme. Uh, so they have the foliage with year-round interest. Uh, here in Michigan, they, they get under the snow and they get a little bit not so semi-evergreen. Um, but if we look closely, they're, I guess you could technically call them semi-evergreen. But uh, for those of you in the warmer climates, they should be evergreen for you. Uh, the heuchera are corabels. They get the midsummer flowers, again, with the tiny little bell-shaped flower, flowers that the pollinators love. Uh, so that's going to be like foliage interest that will last you throughout the full spring, summer, fall. Next, we're going to add some flower color in, and we're going to do that with salvia. So the Color Spears series, there's Pink Dawn, there's Violet Riot. There's a lot of varieties of salvia that we carry. Pinks, uh, various pink colors, blues, purples. Um, so a lot of different, I think there's even, there's whites. So a lot of various shades from white, pink, and blue um, in that spectrum. So again, if you're not a pink person and more of a purple person, there's gonna be a salvia color that will be something I'm sure you'll enjoy. So salvia, it's late spring color, early summer color, and it lasts for weeks. And if you notice that your plants kind of start slowing down, they're not putting on a lot of flowers, no need to worry, go ahead and give them just a light trim and they'll be flowering within probably about another two, maybe three weeks or so. So one of those plants that's early season color, but the color will take you throughout the season if you go through and give them a light trim. The next on the list is a Penstemon Midnight Masquerade. And this plant not only has beautiful flowers, but it's got great dark foliage as well. So that foliage gives you spring, summer, and fall interest. And then midsummer, Midnight Masquerade has pink flowers, um, kind of like little bell-shaped flowers that are really a stunning, the pink is stunning up against that black foliage color. So really a, a perfect pairing of flower and foliage. Um, also too, it's gonna add a little bit of height to the garden. Uh, they're gonna get, I think they get about 30-ish or so inches tall. I'm kind of doing this from memory, trying to picture them out in my garden. Um, but they're going to add a little bit of height into this dry scape garden. And then last, of course, sedum. That's a great plant, drought tolerant plant. And as I mentioned before, we have our rock and low, rock and grow, and lo uh, rock and round series. So if you want to choose a just a low growing ground cover or just maybe a tw tw 10 to 12 inch ball, or even if you want to go up to like 14 to 20 inches, there's various sedum heights that you can choose from. And also too, the nice thing with sedum is not only is there a lot of different flower color, 
but there's a lot of different foliage color as well. So we have a lot of sedum that we carry and yeah, there's this foliage color for any garden. So long foliage color in addition to those late summer fall blooms is what's going to end the season with color for your dry space filler garden. This garden is hardy in zones four to eight, likes to be grown in full sun, and it's got great foliage even when the flowers aren't flowering. So it's that foliage that's gonna always be giving you something interesting in this garden. And of course, being a dry space garden, it's got low water requirements once it's established. So when you're planting these new plants, make sure you're getting them watered in well so they can get established. And then once they're happy in their home, um, you can cut back on the water and then they'll be able to kind of be more of that drought tolerant garden that you're, that you're looking for there. The next garden on the list is foliage friendly shadescapes. So let's take a look and see what we are going to put in the shade that's foliage friendly. And who knows, maybe we'll get a little bit of flowers too. So let's take a look. First, we want to say each has a unique, each of the plants that we're going to look at has kind of a unique foliage interest and one plant really is complementary to the one next to it. So even though there may not be a lot of flower color in this garden, it's that foliage that's going to really just set this garden apart. So the first plant we're going to look at is a Bernera, Jack Frost, uh, Queen of Hearts, Jack, um, Jack of Diamonds, all of these Bernera. Again, like mentioned before, green leaves with a beautiful silver overlay, nice big heart-shaped leaves. So beautiful foliage color and texture. With Bernera, you do get those pink periwinkle spring blooms. So you're gonna start your garden off with a nice poke of blue color, and then it's that foliage that's gonna continue throughout the season. Also in this garden here, in the foliage friendly shadescape, there are more corabels or heucheras. And like I mentioned, lots of different colors of heuchera, and even the leaf texture too. There's some really ruffly ones to some that aren't as ruffled, and they all kind of have that scalloped edge. So there's a lot of variety of corabels or heuchera to choose from when you're creating this shady garden. And again, you can bring the color in with those leaves. Uh, most of the corabels do bloom midsummer, like I mentioned before, with some type of flower, some more significant than others. Um, and you can do that when you're looking at corabels. Um, you'll be able to tell based off of pictures which ones have the better flowers. Usually if they don't have great flowers, we don't even put a picture of the flower. But the ones that do have good flowers, we definitely highlight the flowers for those plants. And then again, hostas are always a great shade addition as long as you don't have deer. So I'm, this is a foliage friendly shadescape, not a deer resistant shadescape. Uh, so with hostas, there are so many different hostas out there. Um, Blue Lake is a great one, uh, Hosta Wee, Empress Wu. Those are just some of the proven winter varieties that we carry. But when you're looking for hostas, there's various sizes available. I mean, there's three foot tall by three foot wide varieties. There's some that are maybe 12 by 12. So depending on what you're looking to do with this garden, there's, there's a size hosta for every garden, quite literally. Uh, also with hostas, there's a lot of color. Um, there's blues, there's greens, there's um, whites, creams, yellows, um, chartreuse. So a lot of variation of color when it comes to hostas. Some are solid, some are kind of a bicolor, some are tricolors. So definitely take a look at hostas, not only as one singular plant, but look at them as a grouping of plants where you can play the colors and the textures and the sizes off of one another. So this particular garden, the foliage friendly shadescape, is hardy in zones four to eight. It's for full to part shade locations and it's got great foliage. The highlight of this, this garden is the foliage that's in it. And it's easy to care for as well. The next combo is called day and night combo. And this too is gonna to be more of a shade to part shade uh, combination. Uh, the name is kind of interesting and it's the foliage. The foliage in this combination is really quite breathtaking. So let's dig in and take a look here at the day and night combo. 
So in this combination, again, we're using the Heuchera or Corabels. So Dolce Wild Rose, Mahogany Monster, Silver Gumdrop, just to name a few to give you some suggestions. Um, but you're gonna have constant foliage color in various shades, spring through fall. So you can mix and match. I mean, the picture is showing just one solid color of Heuchera, which is great, but don't be afraid to go ahead and mix and match some of those varieties if there's several that you like. Um, also too, again, that flower, some of the varieties have beautiful flowerscapes midsummer that the hummingbirds do enjoy. Another plant that I think is quite lovely and I don't think we've talked about yet is the astilbe dark side of the moon. So this astilbe has near black foliage. It's got a lot of texture to the foliage. Um, Midsummer, you get these tall plumes of rosy purple flowers and that purple up against that black is really breathtaking. Like I love the look of that dark side of the moon astilbe. So even when it's not flowering, that foliage is is right on, but when it's the flowers come, it's just, just even extra. And then the last in this combination, again, we're going to talk hostas. Uh, Shadowland Coast to Coast is the one we're going to put up there. And you can see how that's a beautiful chartreuse yellow color. Uh, that color really pops in kind of your darker shade gardens. And the other thing interesting too with colors or hostas that are shades like Coast to Coast is when they emerge in the spring, that's one of the first things you're gonna notice out in your garden because your garden might feel kind of dark and just kind of drab. But once those chartreuse hostas or yellow hostas start emerging, you really can tell that your garden has, is alive and is waking up. So it fills in space, big hostas, small hostas, however, you know, whatever you like, beautiful colors, beautiful textures, from the moment that plant breaks through the ground and starts unfurling, it is definitely starting to put on interest in this day and night garden. This garden would be for full to part shade. It's hardy in zones four to nine. Fantastic foliage. This garden is really all about the foliage. Of course, the dark side of the moon, um, or yeah, dark side of the moon is still be flowers. I was getting it mixed up with a hibiscus that was in my head. Um, but dark side of the moon, Asilbe flowers too, are just fabulous. So long season of interest. And again, it's another combination that really is very easy to care for. All right, back to those of you who have those deer issues. This garden is called No Thank You Deer. So let's take a look at what's in this combination in this garden. So this garden matches fine foliage textures and successive bloom times. So the garden is going to start off with the flowers of Veronica. So maybe um, some varieties to talk about would be the Magic Show White Wands, which is a very beautiful, I mean, it's white, um, but I love adding white in the garden because what it does at night is it just makes your garden glow. So if you don't have white in your garden, add a little white and I think you'll be mesmerized in the night. Um, also another great variety would be Wizard of Oz. It's a nice purple. So Veronica is a late, bloom, uh, late spring blooming perennial. Um, it's fairly low growing, 12, maybe 18 to 20 inches, depending on the variety. And it sends up just this mound of flower spikes. So it's really a very uh, prolific blooming plant, lots of color. And it's another one of those that once it's done flowering, just give it a nice light trim and it's gonna be back to blooming within probably, this one might take a little bit longer, but let's say maybe three weeks or so, you'll start seeing some new growth that will be signs of additional flowers. So early spring color, but that color can last throughout the season if you go ahead and give it just a nice little trim. The plant in this combination that's really going to be the wow, the center of attention is going to be the summerific hardy hibiscus. Um, the variety pictured is Edge of Night. Other varieties would be a brand new one called Cookies and Cream or Ballet Slippers. All of You really can't go wrong with any of the uh, summerific hardy hibiscus. And the reason why is they're all indeterminate bloomers, which means they're blooming from the bottom of that plant all the way to the top. So a lot of the older varieties of hibiscus, all of the flower color was at the top. When the top was done blooming, the plant was done. But these new varieties, they bloom a lot longer because you're getting flower buds up and down those stems. 
So mid to late summer, for us here in Michigan, usually it's around the beginning of August, we start to see these beautiful, huge dinner plate size blooms emerge. And again, definitely one of those plants that's gonna have your neighbors talking. They come in various colors, pinks, reds, whites, kind of creams, um, maybe even a little bit of purple. So in purple, I mean like a lavender pink purple. Um, so a lot of lot of color option with the summerific hibiscus. So I'm sure there's one that the color will fit in your garden. They are late to emerge in the spring. So oftentimes it's like the end of May, even beginning of June, if we have a cold spring here in Michigan, that we're just starting to see them emerge from the ground. But once they do emerge, they're very fast growing. And usually within about two months, they'll go from poking through the ground to giving you flowers. So really quick to catch up, even though they're a late bloomer. And the last plant in this garden here is part of the Prairie Winds collection. So Prairie Winds is the grass collection from Proven Winners. The variety you're seeing here is Lemon Squeeze, which I think is quite a, quite a unique looking uh, grass. I love that chartreuse or lime green color. Some might argue with me that the plant looks like it's sick, but no, it's supposed to be that color. And I think that color just really, it pops in the garden. Um, other options of grasses would be Cheyenne Sky or Niagara Falls. It really doesn't matter which grass you're using here in this garden. It's going to all do the same thing. And that's give you late season and fall interest. So with grasses, they give you nice upright mounding habits. Um, some of them are more columnar, some of them are more rounded and kind of, um, kind of do like a fountain type of a look. Uh, the grasses come in various colors. Some of them are speckled, some of them are striped, some of them are solid. Uh, they, in the fall or late summer, you're gonna see these little seed heads appear and that's really, or plumes, and that's what's giving those uh, grasses their interest. And the other thing is, is if you leave your grasses up in the winter, actually all season these grasses are adding motion to the garden. But in the winter when there's not a lot going on perhaps in your garden, these grasses are going to still be swaying in the breeze. And I think that's just what's such a beautiful thing about grasses is even when they're, let's say, dead, they're not dead, but their blades are dormant, dead, because, you know, grasses you trim back, you can still enjoy them even when they're out of season. So the no thank you deer, well, easy scape is for full sun. It's hardy in zones four to eight. It's a pollinator friendly, easy scape, deer resistant, obviously as the name implies, and it's really very low maintenance and heat tolerant once it's established. And the last one we're gonna talk about today, so thanks for sticking with me if you're still watching this video. Um, but, I, but in all seriousness, I hope that these are gardens that um, have given you some inspiration and maybe are helping those of you that are new gardeners just figure out what to plant together and what would look good together. So that is my goal with this video. Um, so the last one we're going to look at is season long interest. So with perennials, so many people say, you know, I want the perennial that blooms all summer. Well, in all honesty, there's, there is a few, but most perennials really... They don't bloom all summer. Sometimes they'll bloom, you can trim them, you'll get some more blooms, but it's, it's hard to find a perennial that'll take you from start to finish. Uh, so this garden here is gonna give us season long interest. It's gonna be some of the more longer blooming uh, flowers or foliage interest. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the season long interest garden looks like. So in this garden, it actually has two of our new varieties for 2024. Um, you don't need a lot of plants to have a garden with real impact. Here we're pairing foliage and vibrant blooms together to give us that wow factor that's going to take us from spring through the summer. The first plant, which is a new variety, is Artemisia Silver Lining. This plant will be up early in the spring and it will be flashing its silvery foliage. That foliage is simply stunning. It's got great serrated texture to the leaves. Um, one thing I will say with this variety is it's not going to send off runners. It's not invasive. Um, it just creates nice little mounds. Um, I have found though, like for us here in Michigan, and um, you might find this as well, it does, it, you don't have to trim it midsummer around July, but in the trial gardens, it was starting to get a little bit biggish feeling and kind of maybe open a little bit. 
So they just went in and gave it a light trim and let it reflush out and that took it through to the end of the summer. So it can benefit from a light trim midsummer just to keep it looking tidy until the fall. Pair it with a Stilby Dark Side of the Moon. You heard me talk about this one earlier with its great dark near black foliage and the beautiful purple blooms. So you'll have the contrast, like I said, with that black foliage up against the silver. That in itself is just a beautiful combination. And then adding in those purple flowers is really, really stunning. Now, that's not going to be the only purple that you're going to get in this garden or pinkish purple, let's say. Um, we're going to add in some phlox as well. So the Luminary Prismic Pink Phlox is a new phlox variety, uh, part of the Luminary series. And it just has these exquisite hot pink blooms midsummer. Like it's a phlox that just wows when you see it. Um, it also is going to add some height into this Easyscape garden. Uh, they'll get about 24, maybe 30 or so inches tall. So just kind of give the garden a little bit of height um, and it'll bloom midsummer, and then it kind of stops for a little bit and then it kind of, you can deadhead it or it'll kind of bury the dead essentially and send up another round of blooms to give you color till the end of the summer. So the, the black, the silver, and those pinks and purples are just a beautiful mix of flower and foliage color to create just a gorgeous look in this season long interest garden. This garden is hardy in zones four to eight, uh, likes to be planted in full sun locations. It's pollinator friendly, long season of interest from flower and foliage, and is easy to grow. Thanks for watching this presentation on our Easyscape Gardens and hopefully that you, hopefully you were able to find some solutions to maybe some gardening issues you might have. For those of you who are new gardens, hopefully this helped give a little bit of inspiration on things that could be planted together. Um, if you have any questions or comments on any of these Easyscape Gardens, I would love for you to leave them below. And like I said, if you're new to the station, we would invite you to subscribe so that you can um, get all of our latest videos as they're posted. And for those of you who are new to Garden Crossings, this is probably the most important part. I've talked about all these plants and you're probably thinking, where can I get them? Well, you can go to our website, gardencrossings.com and place your order. We're in the pre-order session right now. It's uh, February. So you can go ahead and put your pre-order in for spring and we'll be shipping these plants to your door when it's appropriate for your hardiness zone. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.